Hello again and welcome to this instalment of the Daily Cannon Tactics Board. Stephen Bradley here to bring you the tactical tweaks and quirks that came from Arsenal's oh, desperately disappointing, miserable, depressing, frankly, nil-nil draw in the second leg of their Europa League semi-final with Villarreal, condemning them to another season, next season, without Champions League football and perhaps without European football at all unless a miracle happens in the next three weeks and they put together a run of form that might get them seventh. Uh, and a patently, ridiculously dull game for a game that Arsenal needed to score a goal. For brief glimpses, they looked like they were scoring, but for about 89 of the 90 minutes that were played in this game, Arsenal looked like they had no intent on scoring, never mind intentions. It was passive, it was dour it was lacking in aggression in intentions in passion in emotion this was an arsenal team that looked broken frankly both physically and mentally they were broken and i don't know who the man is to fix it and that's not an in and around way of saying i think Mikel arteta should be sacked as arsenal manager but right now I am, what's the word? I'm very, I'm very, I could be persuaded either way, frankly. Um, there are arguments to keep him and there are arguments to sack him. And the arguments to sack him don't need to be contrived and they don't need to be long. They need to be a rewatching of this game. Because if you have been putting together a highlights film, or low lights film, as I should say, or a mixtape of Arteta's worst moments as Arsenal in an attempt to convince people that he should be sacked, then this game would have undone all your hard work because everything that occurred in this game was entirely down to having a manager who is inexperienced at his job and wasn't able to change on the fly. It's it is as pure and simple as that, unfortunately. And if we go to the game, in the first leg, Arsenal set up with, basically, we'll move party up front for a minute, because that's, and these were Smith Rowe, we'll put party there, and this was Odegaard. And Arsenal, in essence, with this being Ceballos here, and Arsenal played with a false nine, as we've seen Manchester City do time and again in Europe and in big games this season. And Arsenal tried replicating it, but failed because this system requires more than just movement. It requires talent and at least being effective defending, defending and it just needs guts and guts of running. And this front four didn't have it. And as a result, it misfired until Ceballos got sent off and they reverted to almost a 4-4-1 in essence with We'll just put party there for a minute but in essence something like that with martinelli on the, the left wing and they were running and running and running and they managed to get a penalty somewhat fortunately but they got a two one and you would have looked at that and gone okay if arsenal succeeded with this where should you put the 11th player and if you aren't going to be playing a bamyang as a striker which you should always do then you put him there because you're able to match two on two. You get someone that can, you know, defend a little bit for party so that he's got the ability to run forward and take advantage of his skill set, which is beating players off the dribble and then finding a spare pass. That's his greatest skill. And Arteta didn't do that. He did not put party in a position of strength. He put party in his biggest position of weakness. He put party here. Now, this is how Manchester City usually set up on a regular day. Fullbacks will bomb on up here like this to join the attack. One one player sits back. Fernandinho was brilliant for a decade at just reading the game in front of him. And he goes, oh, look, there's a player running here. Smack. Oh, I'm going to take a yellow. Oh, well. And he did it for, like I said, five years and... He was one of the best, you know, it was him and Sergio Busquets, basically, that just did exactly the same job. And 
did it brilliantly. The fullbacks would bomb in. Sometimes they'd be overloading on the left. Sometimes they would they would come into midfield, you know, a la Bayern Munich, and play here almost. Then your two centre midfielders would push up, and you're almost playing, you know, two two four one. It's mad, I agree, but this is the city way. It's very much the Wenger way of the Invincibles, where they would just throw people forward, not willy nilly, but the the attacking positioning of the players and the intelligence of the players, especially going forward, would mean that they would find these spaces over and over again. And they would have players of finding these passes in these gaps over and over again. So, with Arsenal, you need players like Kevin De Bruyne, David Silva, Bernardo Silva, Phil Foden. You need players who are exceptionally talented on the ball to play this system. Because you're going to have times when... Like what Villarreal did, they would just have two banks of four in front of you and they would just shuttle it across, nice and simple, nothing nothing fancy, and they would go right past through us. And even if you have a left winger going through here, a right winger going through here, your right back trying to get around this side, your left back trying to get through this side, if your defence is like this and your midfield is like this, your midfielders have to be exceptionally good on the ball. And when there's the eventual counter-attack, because your full-backs are caught forward like this, your midfielders have to be able to run back as quickly as they can. And they have to be able to have that athleticism and that work rate to come up and down the, the pitch again and again and again because you are making up for this person's, not lack of athleticism, but he's there to defend and these players aren't the quickest because they're there as brilliant defenders. And of course, these players have to be good on the ball as well because sometimes your midfielders will try and find spaces as well and your defenders end up here. Like it's That's the Pep way. It's always been the Pep way. And yes, it's susceptible to counterattacks, but he trusts his team to create something on the ball when it gets into these positions. He's always said it's his job to get the ball up to here and then the player's job to do the rest. Which with with Arteta, it's 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 not like that at all, and in there lies the problem because we've seen now on many times how Arteta likes his teams to play a certain way in certain patterns, and it's been weird to see him chop and change over the last few weeks as much as he did because you can't expect players just to play in a different formation every single week without at least giving them game time to get used to how players run what their tendencies are like for example if you know if Odegaard is coming to the right here and Smith Rowe goes here then suddenly you know there's no one here and Party now is left with a three on two so now he's got to cover all this space which means Parejo, who's unbelievably good on the ball. Yes, he's slow too, but now he's got he's got free balls to Alcacer. So this this takes time. These these new formations take time, and this was only really the second time Arsenal have played something like this. The first time being three 0 down at West Ham. They scored three goals with Odegaard being brilliant, but that was Odegaard's best game for the club, and it it was because he was doing this all game and he was fit then i think it's safe to say that he's not fit now you know he picked up an ankle injury for norway against gibraltar hasn't recovered from it and you know he's been limited ever since frankly and to put such a position of importance in a team in your two central midfielders who aren't known for their their defending it leaves party with the job of being the only defensive midfielder in, in, in the team and it means he has to make sure that he's covering Parejo's runs and he's covering Trigueros's runs inside when he joins as a three like they did or when Alcacer went to the left a little bit and Chukwesi who I have spelled wrong my apologies and 
when Chukwesi was on the pitch for 29 minutes, he was having an absolute field day here because Smith Rowe wasn't coming back enough. He played well, but he wasn't coming back enough. Pepe was doing his best. And Party was being asked to, sh to shuttle over, but Chukwesi was doing this. But the biggest thing that happened for Arsenal, and I'm sure you've been screaming at me for the last seven or eight minutes, is that the left back's name is wrong. And this is the problem. We can make all the excuses we want for why this Arsenal team hasn't performed well this season. Tierney's injury, Aubameyang picking up malaria, Aubameyang being late, Lacazette's injuries, Odegaard only coming in the side in January, Bellerin falling in and out of form, Gabriel falling in and out of form, David Luiz's injuries, pa Thomas Partey's injuries, you know, Smith Rowe and Bukayo Saka only getting into this into the team from from Christmas on, basically. Like this team has gone under so much upheaval in twelve months, it's insane, and nobody. For nobody in the management team at Arsenal over the last year comes out of tonight's debacle with any credit at all. Has Mikel Arteta done an okay job? Maybe. He's won an FA Cup. It's, you know, more than what Tottenham have done. He's trying to build something, clearly, but the way he's going about it would suggest that not that he's over his head, but that he doesn't know how to change things very quickly when things go awry. His, you know, the, the, the people in charge of transfers, you know, Edu, Edu etc. You know, yes, yes, okay, they, they made a couple of good signings, but Gabriel cost 30 million and he wasn't, he wasn't playing tonight despite being fit. No left back was brought in during, your, during the winter transfer window, despite everyone knowing that Kieran Tierney he's not brittle but he's unlucky you know he picks up injuries in the worst possible ways and they're never a weak injuries they're always bad ones you know like he he gets his he gets his shoulder tugged out of its socket during a corner he he goes into a tackle with james miller who's as tough as teak and ends up you know doing his knee and is missing for six weeks you know abameyang picks up malaria <laughs> like you know like there's been a lot of bad bad luck that arsenal have gone through over the season and, you know, not having a proper pre-season because of COVID. There are a lot of reasons why this team is undercooked, but everyone's going through that. You know, like Liverpool have lost 93,000 central defenders this year to, to you know, bad injuries and unlucky injuries and etc. And, you know, they're having a better season than us. Tottenham are having a brutal season. You know, they've sacked the manager and yet they're above us in the league table. Like, you know, Chelsea have sacked their manager and are now in a Champions League final. There's so many things going wrong at this club that I can't forgive the following. Because Arteta clearly had a plan going into this game. And his plan was to play the same way as he's done the last month with this three at the back in possession. So Bellerin pushes forward. Smith Rowe would come here. Holding would be here. Mary would be here. And Xhaka would be here. With Party basically acting as the link player, Smith Rowe would come over here at the start. The, uh, when the teams were announced, I thought, and a lot of people thought, that this would be Saka. Frankly, that Saka would play left wing, Smith Rowe would go left wing there, Pepe would play on the right, and we'd be set up like this almost, with Odegaard drifting into the middle, and Saka playing here like what Danny per uh, Danny Ceballos was doing, and it made sense. You know, to play like this. Because we've been doing it for months. Jack has been okay. He's been very good on the ball. The only time he's really had a bad game at left back was against Chukwesi. But it was a plan that was... It was doing okay. Arsenal's form wasn't fantastic. But it looked like the best we could do in the situation. And... It might have worked. Who knows? But... When Xhaka tweaked his ankle 15 minutes before kickoff, I had two thoughts. I went, one, he's gonna, if he's going to sub him, who does he bring on? Is he going to put, let's say, Smith Rowe starts centre? Is he going to put Saka at left back? And is he going to start Martinelli? Now, it's an exceptionally 
exceptionally attacking side, but considering he'd picked Smith Rowe, you know, to be here and Pepe and Saka, I thought, well, you know, if he's if he's gonna go four four two or four at least something along these ways, he could still do this and it'd be okay. You know, he could still do this and it'd be okay. Yes, Party would still be in essence asked to, you know, be the defensive midfielder of the two, but at least he'd be still in the middle of the park. But no, what he did was Smith Rowe there, well, no, Smith Rowe there, Odegaard there. He left Pepe on the left. He put Martinelli, no, I mean, he put Sack on the right. There we go. And he played Kieran Tierney at left back. Now, He's our best left back, right? There's no there's no denying that, there's no you know confusing with that. If I was gonna pick a team and everyone was fit, Kieran Tierney would be left back. Of course he would be. But you cannot play this way with Kieran Tierney at left back. And here's why. Because this team is set up to do this with Bellerin going here and Holding going here and Mary going here and Tierney going here. And then with Odegaard pushing up and Party going, kind of being here, Smithrow goes there, Odegaard sits there, and you play this way. And that's the way the team was set up to play. And putting Tierney to play here in this system is a complete and utter waste of Kieran Tierney's skill set. Kieran Tierney is at his best when he's here. At least in an attacking sense. right? Can he play... You know, considering how good is he, uh, he, how good he is as a crosser, can he play those long balls down the way? Yes, but not to Xhaka's, you know, competency, and certainly not to David Luiz's competency. And Arsenal do have someone who's quite good at those long raking balls. And then you could just play three at the back with a with a left sided, you know, left footed, left sided centre back, and then. Pepe would go here, Saka would go, no, you go Smith Rowe here, Saka here. And then Saka, basically, if you wanted, Saka could play, le you could almost go back into a five when defending. Like, that's the way you go about it. You, you, you try and make sure, if you're going to play a certain way, then you have to make adjustments that fit the players that you have, that use that utilize their skill sets to the best of their ability so that you end up with a system that's coherent and that they all fit in and instead of changing the players to fit the system he refused to change the system at all and as a result arsenal were left with this With Tierney here, holding here, Bellerin again going up, going forward, Smith Rope kind of playing the link role, and Party stuck here by himself. So now you've got Tierney not really doing a lot because you know he, he look he's unfit, right? But he, so he can't do this. But again, his job half decoy almost because he's almost pushing people back but he's trying his best but he's he's half fit so he's of really no consequence here party is wasted here again he's not a very good defensive midfielder he should be here in the middle of play receiving balls and getting it forward quickly when he's here he looks around and he's like lads is there anyone running and this is the difference between I can't believe I'm saying this about Unai Emery because his last six months at Arsenal were horrific. But because Arsenal had played this way for a month with the centre mid going here and linking up, Arsenal tried to play a certain way and they keep trying to play a certain way. And it doesn't matter if you know how it's supposed to go. 
if the opposition knows how it's supposed to go. Because if the opposition knows how you're supposed to pass the ball, then you're at nothing. And it happened time and time and time again that one day over again that when Leno would get the ball it would go to Mary, it would go to Holding and it would go to Bellerin here from a kick out and I know you know the man upstairs know Stevie Wonder could even see it that he's looking for this ball down the wing to sack him every time every time without fail that's the pattern that they were doing every time so Trigueros would go ha okay I'm going to stand here now what and even when Saka would come really short for it and Pedraza would follow him Trigueros would just keep just sauntering up to him going you're not passing it down that wing you're not you're not getting you're not getting the ball over my head into Saka you're not doing it and then Bellerin would panic because now he's like now what so we'll go back to holding to marry to Tierney who is caught now in in between you know betwixt and between this role here because he wants to do this but he knows he hasn't got the legs for it and so does Coughlin <laughs> so with the right winger here Gaspar pushing up and Pepe now Pepe is dropping back to get the ball because he always does even though he should be doing this to try and make space but he doesn't He's coming back. Gaspar is now coming back, which means Albiol is now pushing up and Torres is pushing up and Aubameyang is now here. With Smithrow and Odegaard and they're all just waiting for the ball. And it goes back to Mary, it goes back to Holding, it goes back to Bellerin. And guess what Bellerin is going to try and do? Yes, you are right. He's going to try and get it to Saka. So Trigueros just goes here. And back and forward and back. And this was the pattern for 65 minutes where Arsenal had no particular plan other than they'd do this and then they'd see a bit of space here and they'd hope that Pepe would run onto it or they'd hope that Tierney would get the ball to Saka here. That was their plan for 65 minutes. And it was... I couldn't believe that he didn't change it beforehand. Like it was so clear that Villarreal had completely scouted what they were doing and they were exceptionally comfortable, especially on the ball, where when Arsenal were pressing, they would go Odegaard, Aubameyang. And there were times where Pepe would be here, Saka would be here, Smith Rowe, and Party and Cochrane would be here. Parejo and Cochrane. Alcacé would show for it. Trigueros would show for it. And Arsenal would try and push up. But Aubameyang would stand here. And Odegaard would stand here. And sometimes Saka and Odegaard would swap. But there'd be times where Rulli would be standing with the ball at his foot. And he'd be going, right, lads. Um, right, the wind blowing that way. I'm going to give the ball to... Um, you and then you just pass it to Gaspar who would give it back to Albiol who would give it back to Rulli and they go mm, it's a nice night here can see why can see. mind living in London is grand time Torres to Pedraza to Parejo and they're out because Party was instructed to sit and Smith Rowe is trying to do all this running by himself and where do you want him to stand like if he stands here he's got to do all this shuffling around by himself and it's impossible like Bellerin at times because Pedraz would be here Saka would be here Bellerin at times would be you know with triggers coming up Bellerin at times would be here because they're trying to hold this three and it would go from here Bellerin would overcommit little ball around the corner and now Pereira has the ball and now they're running like simple stuff Villarreal knew which way Arsenal were going to pass the ball and they knew which way Arsenal were going to press. So every time Arsenal did press, two balls round the corner and off they went. If if Arsenal did manage to get another body in place, back to the goalkeeper, they go to the other side, ball around the corner, Bellerin was beaten because he always overcommits and Parejo's off. Time and again, time and again, time and again. 
and with 65 minutes gone Odegaard was hauled off for Martinelli Saka brought in Martinelli would then go left wing and Pepe would go right and suddenly for five minutes Villarreal couldn't get the ball out of their own half why? well Martinelli wouldn't let them because Martinelli was now pressing in these little channels here and suddenly they couldn't knock the ball around and Rulli was kicking it long and Arsenal were winning it and they were able to build up a little bit of pressure and Smith Rowe and Saka were you know starting to get a little bit of a little bit of effect on Parejo and Coughlin because they were pushing up a little bit more Saka a far more willing runner than Odegaard so he was able to do this work rate that's needed because he's so used to it after playing left back and right back and Smith Rowe was doing a, a gallant effort at just trying to cover all the space while Harty tried his best to work around and it was kind of working on that Arsenal were certainly get, making inroads. They were getting closer. They were creating a couple of corners. But <sighs> with 10 minutes to go, Arsenal are nil-nil. They need a goal. And Aubameyang, who has had precious little service all game, to the, to the amount that in 79 minutes of play, he had 14 touches of the ball. That's less than one every five minutes. At home, in a European semi-final, where you have to score unless you are knocked out. He didn't get the ball even once every five minutes. But when he did get the ball... He hit the post twice. So maybe getting the ball to him was a good idea. Instead of, you know, knocking long balls down the, you know, crossfield balls down the wings all the time. Maybe getting it into his feet or knocking balls through the middle occasionally might have been a better idea. But with 10 minutes to go, and yes, I appreciate he had malaria two weeks ago. And yes, I appreciate the fact that he's lost some weight. And yes, I appreciate that... He hasn't played 90 minutes in a month. But he was Arsenal's only goal threat all game. He was Arsenal's best striker all game. He is your captain. He is your star player. He is the player that you went to in the summer and you said, please stay at our club. We want you to stay. We'll build a team around you. We'll send Ian Wright out and pay homage to you and tell you that you can be the next Thierry Henry that you're wearing 14 is a status of this of the, the status of the number and that you you're fit to wear the shirt and that when the big games come you will get us out and with 10 minutes to go needing a goal needing one goal He made a like-for-like like substitution. And you're going to have to tell me why he did that. You, you are going to have to tell me why with 10 minutes to go in a European Cup semi-final that Arsenal didn't put a Aubameyang on because I, I'm lost I'm this is this is the first time in doing these these videos since the start of January and thank you for watching them it's a great privilege to be able to bring you stuff like this but I am I'm lost I'm genuinely lost and the reason I'm lost isn't because Lacazette isn't a great striker. It's because with 
91 minutes on the clock. He brought on Eddie and Ketty. Like, seriously. S seriously. Like, I, I'm, I'm still at wit's end here. Why? Why did you wait 91 minutes to bring on another striker? Why did you take off your star striker and bring on a striker who was pretty much only fit for 10 minutes? And then you bring on Willian with him, who has scored no goals since arriving at the club in August. It boggles the mind how bad a decision that was. Even if, even if Aubameyang can't move, he is still a better goal threat than pretty much anyone in the club apart from Lacazette. You have to keep him on. It, even, if he, even if he can't play for another two weeks after it and he needs rest, you keep him on. It's the worst decision Mikel Arteta has made as Arsenal manager. Without question. And I include in that the decision to offer Shakodra and Mustafi a new contract in November. That this this is the worst one. Taking off Aubameyang again. He's hit the post twice. He's had three shots because you weren't able to get him the ball, and you took him off. I I don't want to use the word unforgivable because that seems too strong, but. It's verging on it. That that decision alone, if you were to say that Josh Cronkey or Stan Cronkey or whoever you believe is in charge of this club, whether it be Edu, whether it be Vinay Ventikeshem, if you're looking at that and you're going, I believe in my manager because he makes the right decision at the right time, then you know nothing. You know absolutely nothing. It's bizarre the logic process that goes behind taking off your star strike with 10 minutes to go in a European semi-final the only chance of getting into the Champions League next season the only chance really of qualifying for Europe next season the biggest game of the season by far and with 10 minutes to go needing one goal you take off your star striker I don't I don't get it I don't think I'll ever get it and yeah, I <sighs> what what do you say? Like Villarreal outplayed and outmanaged a team with lesser players. No disrespect to Villarreal, they're not as good a team as Arsenal, but they deserve to win over the two highs. And a manager that Arsenal thought wasn't good enough for the main team months ago. There is a lot, a lot to work on at this club. And if you don't think that Mikel Arteta is the man to do it, right now I can't disagree with you. If you enjoyed this video or if you, you know, enjoyed the work that we're doing, please feel free to leave a like on the video. Comment if you disagree with anything I said or if you've picked up something during the game that you'd like to talk about. And if you do want videos like this in your inbox on a regular basis, please subscribe. They will be with you either day of or the day after the game, depending on the lateness of the game. And uh, yeah, bring on West Brom and San Armadice on Sunday. We'll talk to you next time. Cheers.